with breaking news. We begin with breaking news in Vista. Fire crews put out multiple spot fires that closed the westbound lanes of State Route 78 between Sycamore Avenue and Mar Vista Drive. A 10 News viewer sent us this video. Two apartment buildings were evacuated around the 2400 block of University Avenue, but people have been brought back inside. There have been no reports of buildings damaged, but more than one car was burned. That fire has also burned about three and a half acres. Now, crews are just working to put out hot spots. No word yet on what caused this fire. Our breaking news tracker just got to the scene and will monitor this situation. Of course, we will bring you any more updates as soon as we get them. The county's Human Relations Commission plans to write a letter to the CIF following the controversial tortilla throwing incident after a local basketball game. It follows a special meeting tonight sparked by the incident. And good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura has more on what the commission hopes to accomplish. The county's Human Relations Commission voted to write a letter to the CIF and other pertinent agencies. In addition, they passed a set of recommendations that they hope will lead to changes in the long term. That motion passes unanimously. Excellent. Excellent. On Monday, the county's Human Relations Commission agreed on a response to this tortilla throwing incident from June 19th that took place after a high school basketball championship game between Coronado and Orange Glen High Schools. Outrage from the community after two Coronado basketball players apparently threw tortillas at Orange Glen High, which is a predominantly Latino school. The HRC voted to draft a letter to the CIF. The chair of the commission, Ellen Nash, says it will be a letter of inquiry. What is your, you know, cultural competency um, strategies? Um, um, how do you advise um, your athletes with regard to appropriate uh, culturally sensitive behavior? Four people called into the HRC meeting during public comment. Three called the incident an act of hate. No one should have food items thrown at them that are of great cultural significance. One questioned the narrative. A female spectator videotaped the tortillas being hurled into the air and repeatedly declared the action to be racist. However, she could not have known why the tortillas were supplied or what was in the hearts of the two young students from whom they were tossed. But the HRC felt addressing the incident meant focusing on the youth. That's why they also passed a set of recommendations, which will be sent to county staff, aimed at finding ways to bolster and promote anti-hate programs for young people. Well, if we can address issues now, change hearts and mindsets, then I think we will create leaders of the future. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. Now the county, plan county plans to send a letter to the CIF by the end of the week. They also plan to send one to the County Board of Education and potentially other agencies as well. Turning now to coronavirus, people in Los Angeles are being advised to wear a mask indoors in public regardless of their vaccination status. The LA County Public Health Department says the growing spread of that new Delta variant is a major concern. So. People there, they are being asked to mask up at any location where the vaccination status of others is unknown. For now, this is just a recommendation, not a mandate. We reached out to Supervisor Nathan Fletcher's office here in San Diego County. A spokesperson told us, quote, we are not making any changes to our masking guidance in the county. We will continue to monitor the developments with the Delta variant. A person was found shot and bleeding in their driveway in Rolando this evening. Around 8 o'clock tonight, police said the victim was undergoing surgery. They were taken to the hospital. It happened on Alamo Drive across from the Joan Croc Center. One neighbor in the area shared what his brother heard when it went down. I hear, I hear something like, this, like firecracker, pop, pop. Just, he don't think, think about it. It's maybe firecracker or something like that. And next thing we know, and the, the police are all over the house and the street every area. Police are checking with local businesses to see if they have any camera footage of the incident. It was definitely just a bit more shocking than always just hearing about it. Two San Diego cyclists were killed in separate accidents in just 24 hours last week. Tonight we are learning more about who they were and from Good Samaritans who tried to help.
Revolution Bike Shop in Solana Beach is right on Highway 101. While getting ready to open the store last Tuesday morning, manager Stefan Rock noticed something was wrong. And we just heard like a loud bang out front. Rock and several co-workers ran outside and found a cyclist was down. It's just bikes and like pieces broken, um, like the wheels completely out of it. They're cracked in half. The cyclist, who hasn't been identified, was unconscious and later died at the hospital. A San Diego sheriff's spokesperson says the driver that rear-ended him is suspected of driving under the influence. He fled the scene and later turned himself in. Everything's really busy again, so we've got to be aware and the very next day, another cyclist died in La Jolla. According to San Diego police, the accident happened just before 4.30 in the afternoon. The female cyclist and a car were both heading south on North Torrey Pines Road when the two collided. Police say the driver stayed on scene and cooperated. It's unclear what caused the accident. The Salk Institute identifying the cyclist as one of their scientists, Swati Tiagi. The Institute's vice president saying she was, quote, a rising star with immense intelligence, noble modesty and boundless generosity. She leaves behind her husband and 11 month old son. As things start opening up, Rock says these accidents serve as a reminder that drivers and cyclists must share the road. And if you are driving and you see cyclists, if there is no bike lane, we do have the right to, you know, be in, in a lane, right? So just, you know, don't honk at us because there's no bike lane and we're there. Like, we, we do have that right. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. And San Diegans are looking for ways to stay cool during the excessive heat warning. Many inland residents headed for our beaches. Some people spoke to today said they don't mind the marine layer because of the cooler temperatures along the coast. The heat is also keeping air conditioning technicians busy. ASI tells us they're doing their best to keep up with all the calls. When these heat waves come, the, we have the people who haven't used it and haven't done their services, so they're trying it for the first time, so our call volume goes through the roof. Cal ISO didn't issue a flex alert tonight despite the heat wave. The agency said the power grid was able to meet the demand. Rescue workers are still holding out hope that they will find survivors as they continue digging through that rubble of that partially collapsed condo building outside Miami. Ten people have been confirmed dead, but as ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, more than 150 others are still missing tonight. Despite the climbing death toll, rescuers say they're committed to the search in Surfside. We're going to continue and work ceaselessly to exhaust every possible option in our search. Crews building trenches using sonars and dogs, all looking for signs of life. There are certain areas that we have not gotten to, but we've been able to place cameras that seem to have large enough spaces, voids, that occupants may still be in there. The rescue mission risky, one worker falling 25 feet into the rubble below. Crews hoping that beneath the sheets of concrete, pockets of air could hold survivors. It gives us more hope that we'll be able to access those voids and, and, and make those rescues. And sadly, no survivors found since Thursday. Steve Rosenthal was asleep when the building began to crumble. His body still bruised. It's about 1.30 in the morning, and I hear the loudest thunderclap I've ever heard in my life. Federal authorities called in for a preliminary investigation. A 2018 structural report released by the town of Surfside showing evidence of damage in the concrete under the pool deck and parking garage. ABC News confirming residents were assured by a Surfside building official that the tower was, quote, in very good shape. Engineers, meanwhile, combing through the camera footage, looking for clues. When I look at the video, I feel it looks like it starts from the bottom of the building and works its way up or a failure concentrated at the, uh, the, the, the support of the bottom of the building. The review from federal authorities could take a considerable amount of time. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says the state's own investigation could be available sooner. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Miami Beach, Florida. 
And during the city's COVID recovery and response committee hearing today, we got a closer look at how the pandemic is impacting mental health. Here's an in-depth look at the latest data. Sharp Healthcare is highlighting COVID's impact on mental health. Today, Dr. Dara Schwartz said one in 10 people met that threshold for depression or anxiety before the pandemic, and now it's four in 10, and she points the finger at the pandemic. San Diegans, like people across the globe, are experiencing a range of thoughts and emotions as they process what they've been through this year. We do not believe that the rise in shootings around the country, the rise in workplace violence, the rise in acuity in our own behavioral health patients here is coincidence. Sharp Healthcare is using a mental health continuum to measure how someone is doing. The categories range from healthy to reacting to injured to ill. They use colors ranging from green to red for every section. If you're in the healthy or reacting section, no medical attention is recommended. If you're in the injured or ill category for a couple of days, they say you should seek help. She recommends everyone take a minute every day and check what area they fall into on the continuum to ensure they have what they need.